This is uh, the second video in the series of video for completing stage two of our Corona uh, Oculus uh, Shoot the Virus game. So in uh, part one, we stopped at giving this text all of its um, properties, but there's something I owe that I want to go back to from um, video one, and that's in the UI, we gave it all zeros except for this one little negative rotation on the, uh, on the X. And I want to explain, now that we have a text, I want to show you why. Because if we give X a little bit of negative rotation, let me actually increase it, see how it looks like it's hovering above us, like looking down at the user, so the user has to raise their eyes to see it. This is a little too, you know, uh, extreme, so I just gave it about 10 degrees, something like that. So it's not exactly upright, but it's looking down a little bit, tilted down a little bit, about 10 degrees. Okay, now we can go back to um, the next step. We just finished in um, video one, step eight, which is the text called viruses remaining. We gave it all of its um, properties, and now we can see it as the user will see it, kind of, you know, hanging on the wall or on the, on the sky, basically, uh, like a big billboard in the sky. Um, which brings us to step nine. In step nine, it says duplicate the directional light, call it directional light two and give it the following parameters. Now, it's very similar. Now, first of all, let me explain why. It's easy to explain before I, I um, duplicate it. I'm just going to create, just for now, a temporary cube. Give it, reset its position, click on it, here's a cube sitting at the center of the world, as if it was, you know, one of my viruses. Now, when I turn it around, because I have one directional light that comes from one direction, all the sides of this will be lit, except, see, in the back, it's totally dark. If I turn off the gizmos and deselect it, you see how it's absolutely dark? So let me leave it this way. <clears throat> I'm going to add directional light, right click and duplicate, call it direction light two, just to make it nice and organized. I'm going to move it next to direction light one, making sure I'm not nesting it into, into anything. And the only changes in it are going to be the X angle. In other words, think of it as a second sun, just like, you know, on planet Tatooine, um, from Star Wars. Um, and it's coming from a different direction. You see how it automatically lit all the unlit areas? Uh, but because it's a second sun, I'm going to give it no shadows. There's no reason for two suns to make shadows. And uh, I'm going to reduce its intensity to 0 0.5. Everything else pretty much stays the same. So it's a second kind of weaker sun to fill in. So now everything looks lit from all directions, a little more from some directions than others, but there's no totally dark areas here, okay? So it just helps me fill in the light. In, in photography, it's called fill light. That's exactly what it is. And I can save. And that was step number nine. Step number 10, create an empty game object and call it room. Now, here's the idea. Our viruses are going to be bouncing around. I don't need this cube anymore. Bouncing around this space, but there's got to be something for them to bounce off of. So we're going to build an invisible room, a cube, a very large one that the viruses are going to be bouncing inside of. And we're going to be inside that room, but we're just not going to feel like it's a room because it's going to be invisible but it's gonna serve as barriers for the viruses to float around so they don't float indefinitely away from us because then it's gonna be really hard to, um, to shoot them because if they float like, you know, half a kilometer away from me. Um, so rather than doing it with scripting, which measures if they're too far to bring them back, the easiest way is simply to create a bounce room, a, a room where all my objects will be allowed to bounce, only it won't look like a room because it will be invisible. So the first step is to uh, create an empty game object, call it 
room and I believe that its parameters should be all the defaults, the zeros and the ones. Yep. The next step is inside, as a child, create a cube and call it wall. And that's going to be the first wall. I think you're guessing correctly if you think we're going to have six of them. Left, right, front, back, ceiling, and floor. We're going to start with one. I'm not even bothering changing its default material because when it's done, I'm going to turn off the mesh render altogether. It's still there. It just doesn't have any rendering, any visuality to it. Then I'm going to give it the parameters specified in the document. First of all, I'm going to add a script to it called wall bounce. Add component, new script, and its name is going to be wall bounce. Let's make this name exactly capital W capital B because the code I'm going to give you is going to refer to that name. As always, when I create a script this way, it puts it at the top of my assets, which means it's now time to move it into scripts. So now wall has a script. It's a default script. It's an empty script, but it's got a script. Wall bounce. Uh, exact name, new, move scripts to scripts folder. The next thing we're going to do to this generic wall, it's going to become a prefab that we're going to duplicate six times. Give it these parameters, including the physics material called endless bounce. Now, let's see what this material called endless bounce is. We talked about uh, physics material. They specify how things will bounce. Let's find it, by the way. Endless bounce, which is right now sitting inside uh, materials, because it's a material. And look at it. It has very, very little friction and 100% bounciness. 100% bounciness meaning that when it bounces, it loses no energy. Zero would mean that it's like lead, that it's like, you know, doesn't bounce at all. One means an endless bounce. So it's got very little friction and endless bounce. It's be turning those walls to basically ma being made out of very bouncy rubber. So let's give this wall the physics material. Physics material are always in the box collider. And it gives you a menu of all the available physics materials. Save. So now this wall has a physics material. And now, being that it's the first wall, we're going to give it the following parameters. This wall is basically going to be like a, a, a wall of 15 meters by 15 meters, but only one meter thick. So 15, 15. So it's a big wall and negative 7.5, which means it's half, half you know, 7.5 is half of 15. 7.5. So that means everything else is the same. Nothing else. Um, look, the idea is that when I look at this from front to back, I got myself a left wall. If I move away a little bit, here's my left wall. The next thing I'm saying is I don't want to create a bunch more of those. I want to turn this into a prefab and then just use more instances of it, changing each instance's um, parameters. So that's exactly what it says. Drag wall into the prefabs folder, turning into a prefab. So here's my own prefabs folder. It should help have already four things that came with. We actually copied this folder when we downloaded those assets at the beginning of stage one, which is the injector and the poison gas, which we might or might not use uh, in the coronavirus, you know, shape itself that we're going to use. But for right now, while you're joining these guys, you're becoming a prefab. And notice how it's now blue, like a prefab. That would be also a good time to 
go to the scene and change the instance to wall capital L because it's now only one out of six. And I think you're guessing that the next steps are going to be to duplicate the wall uh, into you know five more instances and give him the following transforms. So duplicate it, call the dupe wall R and give it the transform. Now look at how exactly it's the same except instead of negative 0 0.5, it's positive. It's going to the other direction. So all I will have to do is right click duplicate change come on let me change your name wall r and the only difference between wall l and wall r is that right is not negative seven point meters but positive so that's the right wall save then we're going to duplicate it again this time we're going to call it floor and notice again how floor this time, everything stays the same except two things here. Duplicate the wall. Instead of wall, now it's floor. And the floor is going to be in the center, X. It's going to be negative 7.5 meters Y. In other words, lower. 7.5 7 meters lower because it's the floor. It's also, in order to turn it around, going to have 90 degrees Z rotation. Oop. That's not what I meant. 90 degrees Z rotation. See how it's already looking like a floor. And I believe... That's it. Yep. Let's compare. 7.590. Everything else stayed the same. By the way, you, do you notice how um, some of them look bolder than others? Bold is actually where the instance is overriding the settings of the prefab because the prefab was the left wall. So in this case, we're overriding the settings of the prefab. So this is why it's telling us, you know, by making them bold, to alert it, us to the fact that this is where the child is different than its parent. The instance is different than the prefab. Um, then, of course, we're going to duplicate it again and call it ceiling. For some reason, it doesn't want me to rename it. Come on, here we go. Ceiling, and I think you're guessing that the only difference between ceiling is f and floor is its height, the Y. Instead of negative 7.5, half the height down, it's half the height up. And here it is, above us. Um, and now we got a room that we can look into, which has got a left, right, ceiling, floor. The next thing to do will be the front and back. I'll do the back first, because if I do the front, I won't be able to see the back. I'll duplicate whichever one's the last one I did. Call it back. Refer back to the... So we did the floor, did the ceiling, and now we're down to... Back the back. See, it's all played with the same numbers. Here's my 7.5. This time it moved to the Z because it's moving it away from us and we're turning Y uh, 90 degrees. So on the back, Z is going to go to zero, Z rotation, but the Y rotation is going to be 90 degrees. See, now it's facing us, but it's too high. So it's going to be Y zero. Now it's in the middle of the room, but to be at the back of the room, it's Z is going to be 7.5 meters away from us. And I got my back wall. And last but not least, save the front wall, which you're guessing the only number that's going to change is this to a negative 7.5.
front. And the front, in order to sit here, all it needs is to be 15 meters ahead of the back. So if the back is negative 7.5, this is uh, 7.5. This is going to be negative 7.5. And I got my closed cube. I'm holding Option. If this was a PC, I'd be holding Alt and turning it around. And I got my room that I cannot see into. By the way, in a game view, I am in the room. I'm inside the room. I can see the left wall, the right wall, the back. The camera is somewhere in the middle of all of this. If I turn on the gizmos, you can see that my camera is in the middle of the room. But here comes the last step for this. Um, now that the six sides of the wall are built, let me move it more here. Select all the instances. I will hold shift to multi-select and disable mesh render on all of them. The room will become invisible. If gizmos is on, uh, on the, scene, on the scene window, um, you will still be able to see its outlines when selected. Here's what I'm talking about. Left wall, hold shift all the way to front. And if I turn off the mesh renderer, but my gizmos are still on, I'm still able to see that there is something there. It's just invisible. Something for the viruses to be you know, to bounce inside of. Later on, the beauty of this is that since it's all inside one object called room, if I change the scale of the room, I'm changing the scale of the whole room. I can make it much bigger if I want to. Returning it back to one and save. Back to the instructions. Now, if you remember, we attached a script to uh, the prefab called wall, which means all of its uh, instances have that script. And it's going to be, you know, the, the code for that script is in a file I created called code for wall RTF. It's going to be available in module four. Uh, you're going to open it, copy its content and replace with a shell content of the script uh, wall bounce that is attached to the wall prefab now. So first of all, here it is. It's already open for me. I'm going to select all of it and copy. I'm going to, it doesn't matter where I find it. I can find it in the prefab called wall. Here it is. Or I can find it in any of its instances because they're all attached to the same script. So I change the script. I change it for all of them. Wall bounce, edit, script. It opens um, Visual Studio with the default, you know, start and update, and I will clean it up and delete all of its existing content and paste the wall bounce script. The next video, I'm going to stop the tutorial here. The next vid video will be explaining as step number 22 says that uh, once we are done copying and pasting and saving uh, explanation of the script in the tutorial vids will be step 23 and the next tutorial video will be all about that. See you in part three.